What's up everyone, David from DoD Media. Today I want to tell you a little bit about my favorite mobile photo editing app, which is free. It's available on iOS and Android, and it's not Lightroom. Mm. The Lightroom mobile app is a little bit uh, crashy, let's say. It's developed by Google, it's super user-friendly, you don't need to know very much about it, and this tutorial will teach you what you need to know anyway. So let's jump right in and check out Snapseed. So a little bit of background, Snapseed is developed by Google. That's right, Google. It's been free for as long as I've been using it. I don't think they have any intention of charging for it. It's super powerful. You've got practically everything that you would have in Lightroom available in it. And it just works really smoothly, really nicely on Android and on iOS. It hasn't crashed on me once, put it that way. So let's dangle this camera precariously over my phone and see what it does. Okay, so here's a photo of my lunch that I took today. It tasted as good as it looks. It was fantastic. However, the snap that I took of it on the Pixel, the white balance was just really blue and it was, it was just a little bit strange. It was just using natural light by a window. There was no additional lighting. There were no incandescent lights or anything like that, but it just seemed really blue and that just felt a bit strange. So I thought, okay, I'll send it to Snapseed. Now straight up, there's a bunch of filters that you can apply if you want to just have something quick, neat, and done. However, I like to go into tools, and this is where you see everything that Snapseed has to offer. And I mean, I mean, that's, that's basically condensed Lightroom for your mobile. I hope you're really liking my hand acting here. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna fix the white balance. Now, you can have an auto white balance if you want. Uh, it's gonna look for the whitest thing that it thinks is white on here and try and adjust that. But in this case, I find that it's actually a little bit too warm. So what I'm gonna do is just by pushing like that, you can adjust the different settings. I'm just gonna drop the temperature a little bit until I think it looks nice. And then it's looking a tiny bit green, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more purple to that. Lovely. You can see the before and after just by tapping there. Lovely. When you're happy, you're done. Then you go back into tools. Uh, this time I'm just going to brighten it up a tiny bit. So in this first settings, you've got brightness, contrast, saturation, ambience, which is essentially your... It's not just shadows, it's kind of balancing shadows and highlights together. Uh, which I use a lot. If I drag this up, you see it just... It increases the shadows and drops the highlights so that they kind of balance in a slightly HDR-ish kind of look. It can work fantastically well on some shots and it can ruin other shots, so it's really down to the, the photo that you're editing. However, I'm just gonna increase the brightness a bit on this because it was a little bit dark. Okay, like that. And now the thing is that's looking a little bit, not washed out, but it's just lost a bit of its uh, contrast. And so I'm gonna go back into tonal contrast and that is going to add in a bit of contrast in all of the different areas. So individual contrast settings for shadows, for midtones, and for highlights. That is super powerful. So I'm gonna add loads of contrast in the low tones because I want those blacks to look really sharp and crisp. And then a few in the medium tones as well. Again, you can see kind of before and after what that's doing. And it's kind of doing what a clarity brush would do, essentially, but it's not as vicious, it's not as overwhelming as clarity is. All right, and then the final step for this, to be honest, I think is just going into curves and I'm just gonna drag that node up. This is the most important reason why I use Snapseed is because it has a tones curve. That is awesome. To be able to use the tone curve on mobile phone photos or just edit them on your phone is <laughs> so, so good. Okay, what else could we add to this? Um, we could add a frame if I wanted to be cheesy. I could add some vignette maybe. Touch of vignette. No, I don't like the vignette. There's a bunch of little things in here which I haven't used and it may be that they just don't really, you know, have a, a serious purpose. They're more kind of gimmicky things like uh, Retrolux, you know, it's a way of way of putting kind of Instagram-y filters on there, but I don't know why you do that because you can just do that in Instagram. Okay, and finally, I think what I might just do 
is add a tiny, tiny bit of sharpness to this. Now structure, I think, is pretty much clarity. If you've ever used Photoshop or Lightroom, it's the clarity tool. If I increase that, it just really kind of boosts that mid-tone contrast and sharpens it somewhat as well. Again, like the ambience tool, it can work wonders or it can just completely ruin your shot. I'll maybe put it there, that's nice at 40. And then I'll just sharpen that a tiny bit. Uh, let's maybe go to 15. Cool. And now when you aren't actually selecting any tools, you can just hold your finger on it and it shows you the before and after result of your treatment. I mean, that just looks awesome. It looks like I've run it through Lightroom. It's brilliant. If I wanted to, I could add a brush on there. The brush can do dodging and burning, the brush can do exposure, temperature, saturation. Let's make the green of these avocados just slightly more saturated. If you wanna see where you've affected, you can press that and it will show you the areas in highlighted red, like you would find in Photoshop or Lightroom, to be honest. You can see the before and after. It's just boosting the greens there and I guess a little bit the red of the paprika and the cayenne pepper. And to be honest, that's, that's all I'd really do with it, but it's so powerful to be able to use the curves, to be able to have that tonal contrast in there, to be able to adjust the, the ambience if you want to do a kind of HDR-ish kind of look, to have a vignette that you can plop on there or double exposure. It's a really powerful tool. I mean, it's, it's just got so much possibility. Okay, and then when you're done, you can either just save it to your phone by pressing done, or you can just share it straight away with the share button there. So if I share it straight to Instagram, bam. Come along, come along, write a caption. Check out DoD Media, hit that follow button. All right, okay, that's everything I wanted to show you about Snapseed. Let me know if you already use Snapseed, if you have a different workflow for how you edit your photos using the app, put them in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure other people would also find it very valuable information. Give this a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos and tutorials from me at DoD Media. As I said, leave a comment in the comment section. If it's useful, you might win something free from my store. Have a happy Snapseed editing time, and I'll see you in the next video.